in this workflow tutorial, we'll learn how to make this chill lo-fi beat. We'll cover everything from sequencing drums, arranging your chords, and even recording some guitar. But the first thing I want to do is start from an empty canvas. So go to the file menu, new from template, and select empty at the bottom of the list. You can open the channel rack with this button here. I'd like to start by programming drums, and the channel rack is where we're going to hold all of our samples and instruments for the project. To get good samples, I'm going to go to the browser on the left hand side of the screen, and there are hundreds of samples in here. You can spend days searching for samples. Just left click to audition them. Let's take a listen. When you find the perfect one, left click and drag, and then just drop it onto the channel rack. When you find a kick and snare that you like, just middle click and rename and color these to keep your project nice and organized. With that done, let's set a tempo for the project by turning on the metronome. 120 is too fast, so I'm just gonna slow it down to 90. Finally, I'll create a pattern to start programming the drums in. In the step sequencer, a left click adds a beat and a right click removes it. It's a really great way to start sequencing your beat. That's sounding good, but it's not finished yet. I'm going back to the browser to find a hi-hat. It can take a while to find a perfect sample, but that one sounds okay. There's loads of ways to program hats. You can left click and drag to add in steps, but I'm gonna show you a neat trick. Right click, fill each two steps. That sounds great, but the hi-hats are far too loud, so I'm going to use the channel volume dials here just to get everything sitting in the right place. This is a quick and easy way to program a beat, but if you want more control, you can select a channel and open the graph editor, where you can change the pitch, the velocity, and many other parameters. I'm going to go to the velocity and make every second hi-hat a little bit more quiet to try and humanize the groove. I'm also going to loosen up the groove by just increasing the swing amount a little bit. With that sounding good, it's time to open up our mixer. This is where we can add a lot more effects and further process all the elements in our song. A good way to send channels to the mixer is to select them with a shift and left click all together, then select a mixer track, press Ctrl L, and it sent all those channels to that mixer track. From here we can adjust the volume and add further processing effects. Let's take our attention to the pattern picker on the left side of the screen. This is where all of our patterns will be. And if I select the draw tool, I can start drawing our pattern into the playlist. This is where we're going to arrange our entire song. Simply repeating the same pattern over and over gets boring. So I'm going to right click, clone the pattern, and I'm going to make a subtle variation. That sounds better. With the draw tool selected, right click to delete some of our patterns, select pattern 2, and left click to fill those patterns in. To copy these patterns over, I'll use the selection tool from the toolbar, then press Ctrl C, Ctrl V, which copies and pastes it across. This gives us 8 bars, which is enough to start programming some piano. So I'll press F8 to open the plugin picker, where you've got lots of inbuilt synths, instruments, and effects. I'll select Flex and drag and drop it onto the track header. This also links it to its own mixer track, but what is Flex? Flex comes loaded with hundreds of production ready sounds, synths, basses, pianos, strings, you name it, it's in there. I'm gonna pick a piano that I like, this stage grand, it has a certain lo-fi quality to it. When you close the instrument, just know that you can open it at any time by clicking on the track header. I'm gonna quickly rename that track and also rename the pattern that it automatically generated for us. With the draw tool selected, I'm going to extend the pattern out from the right hand side so we can make a longer chord progression. Then I'm going to go to the piano roll and start putting in some notes. You can draw notes in, you can change their velocity, and it's just a really nice place to program chords and melodies. So I'm gonna start programming a chord progression I've got in my head. You can copy along with the same chords and notes or come up with anything you like. 
I'll use the selection tool to just shorten these notes. I'd like to extend this last chord, so I'm going to use the selection tool, drag over those ones, then use the draw tool to extend it out. I've zoomed out to give myself some more space to work with, and again I've just selected all of them, and I'm going to press Ctrl B to paste them across into the next available bar. I'm going to make a few adjustments, just to vary the pattern. On the playlist we can move these patterns around and arrange the beat, and on the mixer we can adjust their volume. To make the piano sound more unique, I'll open Flex and adjust some of the macros. To add more texture to the beat, I'll drag in a sample of vinyl noise that I've recorded, but you can use any sort of noise sample, whether it's water on windows, a tape player, vinyl player, whatever you've got, use it. Okay, so that's much too loud, so I'm going to open the mixer and just fit that into the beat. That sounds good. Going back to the mixer, we can use this to add all sorts of effects to the beat. If I select the drum channel, then go to the right hand side, select an empty slot and load up an effect. In this case, I'm going to load up Fruity Parametric EQ2 to adjust the frequency balance of the drum channel. It's now time to record some guitar. Straight onto the mixer, I'm going to select a track, rename and color it, guitar, go to my audio options, and I'll select my audio interface from this list. Check the video information for a detailed tutorial on recording, but to start off with, I'll plug my guitar in and get some signal going. Go over here and select your input on your audio interface. To make this tone more interesting, I've added some of my favorite effects, but don't worry, I'll explain what they do. The first one is a compressor to try and catch some of the loudest notes and even out my playing. Then I've loaded a delay to add space. And finally a reverb. Which makes the guitar sound lush and spacious. To record onto the track, right click, select track mode, audio track, and select your mixer track from here. So now those two are linked together, and if I press the record button on the mixer, you'll see that that track is also armed to record, and we'll be recording straight into the playlist. Let's hit the record button, and it'll ask us what we want to record. I want to record audio, and here we go. So that's just a little bit of a practice, and here we go. I like that recording and I'm going to keep it, but I want to use the slice tool to just cut off that practice take at the start, then the draw tool and a right click will delete that section of the audio. I also feel that loading an EQ will help me smooth out the top end. That sounds a lot nicer to me. From here, you can keep arranging the beat and layering on more sounds, but remember to keep having fun and enjoy yourself. Do check the video information for more helpful content, and thanks for watching.